Independence Day, ultimate 1990s action-packed alien invasion movie, full of all its cheesy but lovable 90s isms where the world gets invaded by terrifying and technologically advanced aliens who are here for our ultimate destruction. Yep, long before Will Smith was punching Chris Rock, he was punching aliens, where he fights for our freedoms to defeat this terrifying threat. And he's doing it for his family and for President Bill Pullman. Released in 1996, I remember when Independence Day came out. Yes, I'm that old. And it was huge. There was so much anticipation and hype for this movie. But as always, when there is so much anticipation and excitement building, there are always going to be some people left disappointed. But as far as being a fun 90s popcorn movie goes, it delivers on cue. So to end this intro, I'm going to insert a clip of Jeff Goldblum saying checkmate, followed by some dramatic music. Checkmate. So to commemorate the insanity that was the 2022 Oscars, we're going back to one of Will Smith's earliest defying film roles by looking into 10 things that you didn't know about Independence Day. So let's get ready to cover our faces to avoid getting a Will Smith slapping as we check it out. what I call a close encounter. Number 10. The genesis of Independence Day started while promoting Stargate. The creation of Independence Day goes all the way back to the release of fellow science fiction movie Stargate. Released in 1994, just like Independence Day, Stargate was directed by German director Roland Emmerich. While Emmerich was promoting Stargate in Europe, a journalist asked him, why would he make Stargate? a movie involving aliens, if he doesn't believe in aliens. Emmerich replied that he still found the concept of aliens to be fascinating, especially aliens arriving on Earth, and further asked, imagine what it would be like if you woke up one morning to see 15 mile-wide spaceships hovering over major cities, and thus explaining this concept lit a spark in Emmerich's head where he felt that he found the premise of his next movie, where he then approached his frequent collaborator and Independent Day's eventual producer, Dean Devlin, with his exciting idea for a new movie. Number 9. 20th Century Fox immediately greenlit Independence Day. Emmerich and Devlin retreated to Mexico for a month to write the script of what would become Independence Day. They wanted it to be a big-scale movie, going all out guns blazing, rather than having a small threat of aliens arriving in small spaceships. They didn't want the aliens to be an invisible enemy hiding in the background. They wanted a full-eyed view of a large, powerful force invading the world in plain sight for all to see. I always found Independence Day to be a mix of 1990s disaster movies blended with 1950s science fiction movies, like War of the Worlds and The Day the Earth Stood Still. The filmmakers sent the script to 20th Century Fox, and just one day later, 20th Century Fox had greenlit the project. And thus, as of February 1995, Independence Day was in production. Wow, just one day, that's pretty quick negotiations. However, 20th Century Fox did have one issue, that being the movie's title. Number eight, alternative title. 20th Century Fox had reservations over calling the movie Independence Day, as it didn't have anything to do with the real-life Independence Day, aka the Day of America's Declaration of Independence, which took place on July the 4th, 1776. So the alternative title of Doomsday was suggested, which, to be honest, sounds really generic and doesn't really have the glory of Independence Day. So in order to convince the studio, and for the movie to have ties to Independence Day, the speech was written into the script, where Bill Pullman's president declares that today we celebrate our Independence Day. We're fighting for our right to live. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Which gave the movie more of a connection to the actual day. 
and thus Independence Day was chosen as the title. Now, I actually can understand 20th Century Fox's hesitation. After all, with a title like Independence Day, some people may have thought that it was a period piece drama about the actual Declaration of Independence. But thankfully, that didn't happen. But yeah, Independence Day could have been called Doomsday. The difference is, one of these titles is very positive and optimistic, the other one is all doom and gloom. During the movie's production, the movie went under the title of ID4. In fact, that was even used as a subtitle on the movie's posters and marketing, with the movie seemingly called Independence Day ID4. This is because Warner Brothers owned the rights to the title Independence Day, thanks to a movie they distributed in 1983, also called Independence Day, which was more of a serious drama, so no aliens to be seen there. Number 7. Original Choice to Play the Lead There are tons of famous faces who show up in Independence Day. After all, Independence Day is an extension of the 1970s disaster movies, which were usually made up of an ensemble cast, a sort of who's who of famous faces. So Independence Day kept up with that tradition. Some of these familiar faces include Jeff Goldblum as David Levison, where Goldblum does his usual awkward, nerdy scientist thing that he was doing in the 80s and 90s. Bill Pullman was the President of the United States, who played the part both noble and heroic, as well as Randy Quaid as an irresponsible alcoholic, who actually saves the day. Yeah, look, just imagine Cousin Eddie fighting aliens. However, the true standout performance was Will Smith as the heroic Captain Steve Hiller, who thanks to his on-screen likability, charisma, and comedic timing, really did kind of steal the show. And although Independence Day wasn't his first big breakout movie, it was clear while watching it that he was a big Hollywood star in the making. However, Smith wasn't the original choice for the role. That was, in fact, Ethan Hawke. But he didn't want to take part and help save the world, as he found the script to be really crap. Devlin and Emmerich ended up casting Will Smith because they loved his performance in Six Degrees of Separation, and so Smith was cast. Number 6. The US Military Backed Out A huge focus of Independence Day is the US military, and thankfully the military came on board and agreed to contribute to Independent Day's production offering the services of cast and crew being able to use military uniforms, vehicles, as well as filming on its bases. So it seemed that Independence Day and the military was a match made in heaven. That is until the military got wind of a subplot in Independence Day, involving the infamous Area 51, as well as the revelation that alien bodies and technology were being hidden there. This is according to some online articles, of course. Once learning of this element in the movie, the military backed out and didn't want any part of Independence Day, and thus no longer offered its services to the production. Yikes! I guess the military really doesn't want to be associated with Area 51. Hmm, conspiracy intensifies. Number 5. James Brown's Scream Defeated the Aliens just when Independence Day couldn't get any weirder, it seems that the godfather of soul himself, James Brown, lent a hand in the movie's climax. Sort of. In the movie's finale, we see Randy Quaid's character defeat the alien ship by way of kamikaze. And just as the ship blows up, we hear a scream. The scream used was a recording of Brown's iconic scream, only it's slightly warped. There you go, did you hear it? I'll play it again, and just listen carefully. Weird, huh? That's the scream he gives off at the start of his song, I Feel Good. I feel good. In fact, the production of Independence Day used many interesting resources, including the submarine scene in the movie was the same one used for Crimson Tide. The White House sets were sets that were left over from the movies Nixon and the American President, and the B-3 stealth bomber was the same one that was used for the action movie Broken Arrow. So to bring Independence Day to life, it was a mishmash of sets and vehicles previously used for other movies. And, um, James Brown's scream. <laughs> Love it. Number four. One location proved to be too stinky for Will Smith. 
One of the most iconic moments in the movie is where Will Smith is dragging the alien through the desert, doing his usual funny Will Smith-isms, talking about how he should be at a barbecue, when he suddenly screams out, what is that smell? And what the hell is that smell?! Leading us, the viewers, to think that not only are the aliens in Independence Day pretty deadly, but they are also pretty stinky poos too. Well, this line wasn't in the script, but was ad-libbed by Smith. But the reason he yelled out, what's that smell, is because the location where the scene was being shot was genuinely smelly. The scene was shot near the Great Salt Lake of Utah, and what Smith was smelling was hundreds of dead shrimp. And given his reaction, we can only imagine just how badly the place stunk. And what the hell is that smell? Speaking of acting quirks, actor Robert Lodger played a US general. Although Lodger grew angry as he felt that he had been misled into starring in the movie, as he was under the impression that Independence Day was a spoof. That's because producer Dean Devlin told the actor to watch the movie Airplane for a reference of how to play the role. And as we all know, Airplane is an oddball spoof movie. What he meant to say was, watch the movie Airport. Number three, book series and other merch. After Independence Day was released and was a massive success, it seemed that people wanted more Independence Day. However, if they wanted an on-screen sequel, they would have to wait a whole 20 years with Independence Day Resurgence, where they were even supposedly planning an Independence Day cinematic universe. Yeah, remember that? But for fans who couldn't wait 20 years for a disappointing sequel, they could still get on board with more Independence Day adventures in the form of the Independence Day books. The book started in 1996 with a novelization of the Independence Day movie. Following that, a prequel book was published in 1998 called Independence Day Silent Zone, which was set in the 60s and 70s which was then followed up by another book in 1999 called Independence Day or In the Desert. But the book adventures of Independence Day didn't end there, as in 2016 a new book was published called Independence Day Crucible, which was to act as a story to connect the dots from the first Independence Day movie to the then upcoming sequel Independence Day Resurgence. And then lastly, there was an Independence Day Resurgence novelization, with a total of five books being published. Also, to tie in with the movie, Marvel Comics released a short comic book series adaptation of Independence Day. And wow, I've never read these comics, but going by these pictures, I wish I did, as the artwork illustration is truly epic. Seriously, if I had known about this at the time, I would have read these comics. And of course, there was the Independence Day action figures, and these were also awesome. I didn't really care so much for the human characters in this lineup, but what really got my attention was the aliens. They looked pretty cool and were lots of fun. But they kind of gave the movie away. As to my knowledge, none of the trailers of Independence Day at the time actually revealed what the aliens looked like, as they no doubt wanted it to be kept a surprise. But the action figures went ahead and showed you what the aliens looked like anyway. Completely giving away the surprise and letting us kids know what to expect. Which is kind of funny when you think about it. Number two, many believe Independence Day is a War of the Worlds adaptation. There are actually a lot of similarities between Independence Day and the H.G. Wells classic War of the Worlds, to the point where some have argued over the years that Independence Day is kind of like a remake of War of the Worlds, right down to the aliens' eventual downfall of a virus. In War of the Worlds, it's biological germs. In Independence Day, it's a computer virus. There actually was a deleted scene which shows how Goldblum's David character was able to use his computer to decipher the alien technology thanks to the spaceship at Area 51. And something something techno babble, he was able to download a virus into the ship, blah blah blah. Yeah look, I'm not good at explaining the technicalities, so I just trust the checkmate. But that aside, this begs to ask the question, is Independence Day really just a 1990s War of the Worlds? After all, both stories are about a full-scale alien invasion of Earth, with a group of human heroes having to band together to defeat the threat. Naturally, there are going to be comparisons. But I guess what really seals the deal for many people is the virus similarities. So what do you guys think? Remake or original work with similarities? Number 1. Highest grossing movie of 1996 Independence Day was released on July the 3rd in the States, making its release just in time for America's real-life Independence Day, which is on July 4th. 
and it was welcomed with massive box office numbers, bringing in over $814 million on a $75 million budget, making it the highest grossing movie of 1996, beating other popular movies like fellow disaster movie Twister and Mission Impossible. But not only that, it also became the second highest grossing movie of all time after Jurassic Park. Independence Day was so big, it even made it on the cover of Time magazine, and it also won an Academy Award for Best Special Effects. And to this day, it's the 72nd highest grossing movie of all time. However, despite the glorious box office figures, critics did have some harsh words to say about Independence Day. Some felt that the story and dialogue was weak, and that the characters were just mere stereotypes. But most critics agreed that despite those problems, the movie does live up to the momentum of being a blockbuster spectacle full of action and great special effects. During the 90s, the disaster movie genre had made a comeback, and Independence Day was the peak of that comeback, when it exploded into a big, extravagant spectacle. However, I feel that after Independence Day, the disaster movie trope was on its way out. It's like Independence Day was the big bang to see the genre off with. Well, at least at that time. Unlike now, where science fiction alien movies have to be dark and realistic and be a reflection on the doom and gloom depressing real modern world, it's always fun to go back to Independence Day, to a more carefree, innocent time, where movies like this were not to be taken seriously and were honestly just about fun. I think in a post-9-11 world, a film like the original Independence Day couldn't be made. So Independence Day is the product of a bygone era. But damn if you don't get caught up in the cheesiness of this movie. It's fun to go back and explore Independence Day for a trip down memory lane to see what blockbuster movies in the 90s were like. They were fun, carefree popcorn movies. So if you watch Independence Day, just don't expect a masterpiece, but just a fun thrill ride of the time that it was made in. Anyway, I'm Minty, and checkmate. See ya!